Hi there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is a Cook Along Podcast Quick Bite. It's time for another self-indulgent pamper yourself cocktail, don't you think? This recipe will make just one serving, so you can make it for yourself and sit down with some snacks to go with it in front of your TV. No one will be the wiser, and you will be the happier. I found this a while back, but it's taken me a while to get around to making it and trying it out. And I did so the other night, and it was lovely. Really, just a yummy thing. I found myself saying out loud repeatedly, yeah, yeah, this is really nice. So so I'm going to share it with you. This is a basil vodka gimlet cocktail, and it comes from mamagourmand.com. So you can find the recipe there along with a lot of other fun cocktails if you wanted to explore that concept a little bit further. A normal gimlet that you would buy in a bar is a couple of ounces of gin or vodka. And I don't do gin because I just don't like it. I know that that puts me, I think, in a minority. But to me, it tastes like pine needles and I can never get beyond that. I don't really want the taste of pine needles in my food or beverages. So I don't do gin. And since your classic gimlet can be either gin or vodka, I will always opt for vodka on that. And then you need some simple syrup and a little lime juice. You put that in a cocktail shaker with some ice and shake it up and then strain it out over ice or into a chilled glass. And there you have a classic gimlet. This one is, I think, more fun and more interesting. The basil in here kind of takes it to a level of specialness that I didn't anticipate, but I certainly reacted to it as I was drinking it because it's not an overwhelming flavor, but it's definitely there and enhances the lime juice beautifully. And I am, as you know, a huge fan of basil. So this is kind of a perfect recipe for me. If you want to try this, I think there's nothing here not to like, unless you don't do alcohol, in which case I would suggest you could still try this as a sort of special indulgence if you used water in place of the vodka, because vodka is not all that strong of a flavor and it might work. It's worth a try, don't you think? The equipment that you're going to need are a muddler, which if you don't know what that is, I'll describe it in a minute. You could also use a long-handled fork or some chopsticks or anything that you can kind of stir and smash the basil with. You need a shot glass or some way to measure an ounce, which is about two tablespoons, so you can do it that way if you have to. You need a cocktail shaker or jar. I like my cocktails fancy schmancy and cheap. In other words, I'd really rather drink them at home than out at a bar because out at a bar, you pay as much for the drink as you would for the whole bottle of booze, it seems to me sometimes. I have a few other recipes on the webpage, thecookalongpodcast.com, and they are, both of them, pretty culinarily indulgent and a little bit unusual and exotic because that's the most fun to me. I hate to say it, but that may be a carryover from my youth when I was first learning to drink cocktails, which I've never really taken very seriously. They are a rare occasion kind of treat. When I first started learning how to drink them, which might or might not have been absolutely legal, I was drinking things like pink ladies and grasshoppers and Kahlua and creams and white Russians, coffee nudges, you know, all really sweet beginning drinker combos. And I can't say, as I look at these three that I've just told you about, I've graduated very far beyond that. They're not quite as sweet and not quite as floofy, but they're still definitely on the mildly exotic side and very sweet. My alcohol of choice is whiskey. I started out preferring rum because that's what my mother drank. My father liked bourbon. I have a fondness for blended Canadian whiskey because it's just so smooth and soft and blends with so many other flavors, if you ask me. But it's a real unusual moment for me to decide to have a cocktail. But if I'm going to have one, home is the better place because I don't feel the pain in my pocketbook. Here are the ingredients for the one I want you to try today or tomorrow or the weekend. The recipe suggests 
eight to 10 fresh basil leaves. I think that's a lot, but I think it also completely depends on the size of your basil leaves. I have had basil leaves about the size of the tip of my little finger, and I have had basil leaves three and a half inches by an inch and a half. And I think that you have to gauge on your own how much basil flavor you want in this. My assumption when this person named Melissa Erdelak suggests eight to 10 fresh basil leaves is that they are small. I put in, I think, five and they were huge. They were really big ones. So use your best judgment. This is for one drink. And it seems to me also that economically, whether you're growing your basil or buying your basil, using eight to 10 leaves at one time in one drink lays waste to the plant, and then you are without basil for your next pasta dish or pizza. But it's your call. Second ingredient is an ounce of fresh lime juice. Now you can use roses or whatever kind of bottled lime juice you might have on hand, but a fresh lime is going to give you a sharper, brighter taste. So if you've got one of those, it's the best way to go. I still say, if you don't have a fresh lime in the house, but you do have the other lime juice, do not let it stop you that you don't have that fresh fruit because it's still good, even with the pre-squeezed bottled stuff. You need an ounce of simple syrup, except that I am lazy and have come to trust my faithful substitute for that, which is maple syrup. A simple syrup is not hard to make. It's equal amounts of sugar and water, and you bring it to a boil either on the stovetop or in your microwave oven until the sugar dissolves, and then you have simple syrup. But you also then have to make it cold, or at least cool, before you can use it in your cocktail. And I just don't usually have that much sense of wanting a cocktail ahead of time, and so I end up using the maple syrup, which is in the other couple of cocktail recipes on my website. The first is a whiskey sour for one, and it uses maple syrup instead of simple syrup. And the second one, which is to die for, is vanilla cinnamon maple whiskey sour. I learned about maple as a sweetener for drinks by reading about some recipes for summer lemonade that use it so that you don't have to do the simple syrup thing. And I find the simple syrup to be lacking in body or something. I always feel a little as though something is missing in my cocktail when I use homemade simple syrup. But when I add maple syrup instead, the body comes in. It doesn't taste mapley in any way. There's just not enough of it. It's just richer and thicker. And I think a really fabulous way to sweeten cocktails or any kind of beverage, actually, especially because I at least always have maple syrup in my refrigerator. Now, this is the real thing. I have not tried this with mostly corn syrup based pancake syrup. And I would be hesitant to do that. But real maple syrup? Heck yeah. That's my substitute in this recipe. And it has only one downside. It tastes fabulous. But this cocktail is supposed to be clear or a little green. You should be able to see through it or at least have it look as though you're looking at limeade. It's green. When you add maple syrup instead of simple syrup, it turns it kind of golden brown. And I don't have a problem with that. I like the caramel color that it imparts. But it is not traditional in any way. That's just so you know. It is not going to look like a normal gimlet. And then you need two ounces of vodka. And I have a modification here as well, because two ounces of vodka in a single cocktail will knock me flat. And I don't really want that. I want the taste of the cocktail. I want to appreciate the cocktail. I want to enjoy the cocktail. And I want to be able to think later and to sleep. So I use one ounce of vodka and then I replace the second ounce of vodka with a shot of water which is what makes me think that you could leave out the vodka altogether and just use two ounces of water to replace it. And then if you want to garnish it, you know, a lime wedge or a fresh basil leaf, if you have any left when you're done with this, are always good garnishes for any kind of drink, but for this one in particular, because they're so appropriate. 
there are a couple of do-aheads depending on what you're using to make the cocktail with. If you want to use a fresh lime, obviously you're going to have to squeeze the juice out of that. And if you want to use a simple syrup, obviously you're going to have to make that ahead of time and then let it cool. Now, all you really have to do is combine the ingredients. It takes about five minutes to make, and a lot of that has to do with the basil. I hope you have a cocktail shaker. If you don't, just get yourself a jar with a really tight lid. And then what you want to do, according to the recipe, she suggests that you put the basil leaves and the lime juice and the simple syrup, or in my case, maple syrup, into a cocktail shaker and then use a muddler, which looks a little like one of those gadgets you use to get honey out of a jar. It's a thing to use to beat up the basil, or you can use a fork and just kind of stab at it and crush it around against the side of the cocktail shaker or whatever you have to do to kind of smash them up in order to get the basil to release the flavor. I have a suggestion about that that will shorten that process and make it more pungent because I think it's haphazard how much flavor you're going to get out of that basil if you try to do it with a fork or a muddler. So after you choose how many leaves you're going to use, I suggest you crunch them in your hand and roll them around between your palms a few times and then drop them from there into the cocktail shaker. Because by then, hopefully you've already kind of crushed some of the capillaries that will release the flavors and it'll be already smashed up a little bit before you put it in. And I think also... Don't hesitate to scrunch it up pretty good because once it's in there, you're still going to get in there with some kind of a stirring device to smash it around and mix it around and try to release as much of the flavor of the basil as you possibly can. Once you've done that, you add the vodka and two or three ice cubes. Put the lid on and shake it really hard until the ice cubes are almost gone. There's your cocktail. You're going to strain it into either a chilled glass, if you're being fancy about this, strain all the ice out and just leave it in the glass for what they call straight up, or put it over ice in a glass. This tastes good enough that you're going to have to keep yourself from sucking it down because it goes down like limeade. There's a picture of this on the website. While we're at it, I'll give you some modifications that Melissa suggests for her recipe And I think they sound like fun, but I haven't tried them yet. They feel like summer things to me, and it's not summer right now. Not that that really matters. I think it's all about craving. So here are some things you might crave and want to try. She suggests a few slices of cucumber to put in the bottom of the cocktail shaker along with the basil, which I'm sure would do some interesting things and make a really cool, refreshing summertime flavor. She suggests adding three fresh blackberries along with the basil. She suggests substituting lemon juice for the lime and gin for the vodka, and then you have a gin sour. And she also suggests something she calls a French gimlet, which leaves out the simple syrup and is replaced with elderflower liqueur. The rest of the recipe is the same. I like this cocktail very much and felt it worthy to join the exceptionally yummy ones I already have on the Cook Along podcast website. If you decide to try this, maybe you could make two because this recipe would not be hard to double and share it with a friend and tell the friend that you got the recipe here on the Cook Along podcast and tell them about all the other things you may have found fun to make and fun to eat on the Cook Along podcast so that they might go and listen as well. Tune in two weeks from today for another Quick Bite podcast. And next week, another fun, easy, and superbly yummy recipe. And so until that time, happy cooking. Happy cooking.